on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. At the time, in 2004, email marketing wasn't huge. And so I actually sent out a broadcast fax. So it's Sunday night. It would go out to every, I think I picked 1,500 businesses and I sent them out. So on Sunday night, a fax came through to everyone's machine. So they'd come in the next day and there'd be faxes, cheap flights or whatever. And one yeah. of the faxes was for my new uh, recruitment agency. And yeah. I, I got one response to the fax. But that piece of business, I was able to milk that piece of business for about, for in excess of a million euros over the course of the next three years. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up everybody, I'm Chaz Wolf. Gathering the Kings podcast today. I've got John Sharp on the King stage, my brother from an from another part of the world. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, and thank you for having me on today. Very much appreciate it. Absolutely. I didn't think about it. I welcomed you, said good morning to you, but it's probably not morning your time. <laughs> Quarter past three in the afternoon, so uh, the the kids are home from school already. There you go. I I would have just sent mine off, but today's the day before Thanksgiving here in the u.s and so my kids are downstairs screaming having a great time hopefully we don't hear them but here we are (laughs) needless to say john tell us what kind of business that you got my brother the uh, we uh, i run a sales agency so we supply businesses with sales teams so we have a a portfolio of amazing clients we have teams selling uh, uh renewable energy We sell rural broadband. We have uh, teams out operating on behalf of UNICEF. We have uh, some teams out selling a new kind of subscription-based dog food. That is, since the the lockdown, the dog population of Ireland has increased significantly. And a lot of those uh, dog owners want another option other than tin food or kibble. So, uh, But the renewable energy piece is probably our biggest teams. We have... Five offices around the country and probably about 20 vehicles dedicated to that team. The rural broadband is bringing, there's a lot of parts of Ireland that don't have internet. So we partnered with a company and we're in, we're in rural Ireland calling on farmers and letting them know that we can, we have a way of delivering internet into their homes. So renewable energy, broadband into the rural, UNICEF is feeding the children and the the dogs is for the animals. So uh, I think we got to, got to make sure we cover the whole gamut here. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously what I heard you say is that you had to build teams, sales process clearly from different angles of industry and, and end user, which is really cool because a lot of people get confused by that about the sales process and how those things work and even building a sales team. So I'm sure we'll get into a lot of that. Before we do though, I want to know what, what's, what's ticking on the inside of John? Like, why are you still doing this for all intents and purposes? Like I told you before we got started here, you're part of the top 10% of businesses that have done a million or more in revenue. That's why we've got you here on the show. Why are you still pushing it? Even with the success that you've had? I'm I'm just I'm not finished. Nothing nothing is finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the more you know, the more you know that you don't know. And the more you dive into an industry, like we recruit, train, manage payroll. We're we're we we've got a fleet of vehicles where the the whole business is governed with technology. We've got handheld devices that track individuals, track their activity. As with any technology or any iteration of any product, you're always thinking about the next iteration and the next scalable step to take so if you're if you're working in a sales job like i might have been 20 years ago you're thinking i could do this better on my own so you're you're looking to evolve out of that sales job and maybe get into your own gig and then when you do have your own gig and you start getting some success you've got to learn what do you do with that success so you might learn a little bit about retail investment or you might start trying to look at maybe seeding other businesses or investing in other complementary businesses or and then yeah. You, you might want to look further up the chain and ultimately do it that on a, on a more structured basis, yeah. venture capital. So even, and even at that, there is always room 
to evolve that oh. even further. So yep. you're never, the game is never over no matter yeah. how far you get along the along the chain there's always something that's going to inspire you something that you didn't know about something that right. you can learn and uh, so that's it but fundamentally everything we're doing is a work in progress everything we're doing has potential to get better and yeah. uh, we've a we've a backbone of the organization a team and i would see my role as taking the business and thin it as far as they can possibly go in their lives. And that is, we're nowhere near, we're nowhere near checking out of that plan at the moment. Yeah. Well, I loved what you said. You gave a distinction of not only the organization reaching its potential and obviously new iteration after new iteration after new iteration gives you new ideas and new ideas and growth. And, and there's really mm. this never done process. I say all the time that I'm grateful, but not done. Yeah. Grateful yeah. for where I'm at. Grateful for the scenery of this current mm. position. Love where I'm at. Content yeah. in that moment not done. <laughs> not done. And so you not gave done. a great, a clear distinction on that. And then on top of that, then it goes into now your people, as far as being able to then help them reach their potential. Was it always like that for you? Or did you, did you grow into that piece of it? Well, I was very, I'm very, we were very lucky. We have a, we, we have a backbone in our organization that's been there probably seven years. And a lot of these guys are Eastern European guys came over from Bosnia. And a lot of them, you, 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 you might have been uh, the, I think the average monthly wage in Bosnia back in 2015 was about 500 euros, which is wow. $500 yeah. a month. So yeah. Yeah. a lot of these guys that the, we have a sort of a Bosnian vein running through our business, a Croatian, and a lot of these guys, they would have come across, moved to Dublin, stayed in hostels, found sales jobs. They would have evolved. Some of them that joined us, there's a, Vedran Petrovic I was sort of a the managing director of Bill Save. He okay. is a born leader and he the, there's a crew there that they're, and, and they're, they've all evolved into great managers and leaders of yeah. of men. And I, I serve these guys and the to see some of these guys have come over, they come over, stayed in hostels, built a life, got an apartment, flew over right. their wives and kids and have evolved yeah. even further. And now these guys are driving Audis and BMWs and they are absolutely, absolutely crushing game. Yeah. so and you can see they're hungry for more they want everything yeah. life has to offer vedran vedran bozic marino bozic dragos amis Gulesse in our business like they want they want it all and if i can't give them the platform to to uh, to get that within our business then they're going to go somewhere else and get it somewhere else and uh, yep. these guys are worth their weight in gold so <laughs> i can't i can't let that happen yeah exactly well you spoken know? like a true salesperson even yourself the value of of a good salesperson and it doesn't mean that you cater to to a top performer and you give them every single th thing that they want there's obviously a culture that you're building i'm sure and we'll talk about this but <clears throat> there there's a there's a layer though or an attentiveness when you when you can hone in on someone that has that skill, it's like there's a there's just it's just a night and day difference when someone can come in and produce like that. And so it sounds like you've got a whole crew of of guys like that, which is pretty incredible, especially for your clients. I'm sure that they feel pretty lucky to have have a guy like you in their corner with a team that you have. Yeah, no, it's it's great. It is it's great, and that and that's it. And you want to you, you want to you want to protect that by giving them right. autonomy by trusting them to make decisions and it is and that's what we do we get out of their way we 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 might tee up new clients or new campaigns but you know right. once we have it teed up we get out of the way and yeah. you know let the let, let the, do, let the let the horses run let them do their thing and we haven't been disappointed we haven't we haven't been disappointed yet yeah, that's incredible. Well, let's get a little practical here. I'd love to hear about your story. How did how did you get involved in just business in general? Tell us about your upbringing a little bit. Maybe tell us how you started this business. Give us a little bit of the backdrop. Well, I can sort of recall when I was very young, the kids on the streets would talk about their dad's boss. And I would say to my dad, who's your boss, dad? And my dad worked for himself. He was his own boss. He was, he was actually a he was a bookie at the racetrack. So there you go. Yeah, from the age of 10, I'm kind of traveling around racetracks and I'm, I'm working at the races and yeah. by 14, <laughs> 14 or 15, I'm, I'm having hundreds on horses and sometimes winning thousands, you know? So right. there's, the, I suppose entrepreneurship is, is, is risk. So yeah. I was able to develop quite a, quite a tolerance for risk at a young age. Sure. Now, that didn't mean I, I wanted to be a bookie or any of that kind of stuff. I still wanted right. to break into corporate Ireland as such. So I got into sales when I got into recruitment and I just, my first business was a recruitment agency and I went working for a recruitment agency. 
I was sitting at a desk. I was billing 30K in the month. And then at the end of the month, they'd hand me a check for 2K or something along those lines. And I'd <laughs> sure. think to myself, oh, I think I want to be on the other end of that equation. And I've, so there was a, the, that's when you're working in a business, I'm, I, the jobs that I had, I sales roles or recruitment roles. I was always sitting there thinking I could do this without you guys. So that, yeah. that was, that was always there. So December, 2004, I, I remember I was working for a guy and he said to me, John, you're, you're kind of wasted in this business. And I was kind of ready to go. And that was the push that I needed. So I set up a recruitment agency and, and believe it or not, I had no clients starting out, but I, uh-huh. I, I, I sent out at the time in 2004, there wasn't much email marketing, wasn't huge. And so I actually sent out a broadcast fax. I sent out a bro- <laughs> a bro- you could send these broadcast faxes out, right? So it's Sunday night. It would go out to every, I think I picked 1500 businesses in my wow. locale and I sent them out. So on Sunday night, a fax came through to everyone's machine. So they'd come in the next day and there'd be faxes, cheap flights or whatever. And one yeah. of the faxes was for my new uh, recruitment agency. And yeah. I, I got one response to the fax. I got one response to the fax, but that piece of business, I was able to milk that piece of business for about, for in excess of a million euros over the course of the next three years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, and then that, that, that recruitment area of specialization that dried up, it dried up completely. Yeah. Uh, I'm in business with a guy by the name of Brian Rooney. <clears throat> One day he walked into my office in 2009 around sort of March time. He had a mortgage business that had just gone south. The, the, the financial collapse had just right. caved in on, on, on us. And we were yeah. both at a loose end. He had an idea to uh, get on some sales contractors and go out and start. It was recession business, saving people money on their bills. We were going into businesses right. first and saying, listen, we'll do a diagnostic on your bills. Your revenue is down because we're in a recession. We'll do a diagnostic on your bills and tell you what you can save on your electricity, your gas, your broadband, your waste, and all this right. kind of stuff. So yeah. we uh, we started we started tipping away at that. And then I had another, I had another stroke of unbelievable look the the, the facts was was an unbelievable bit of look there and then i had another unbelievable bit of luck i sent a i sent a email to a guy paul o'shaughnessy he was working in airtricity at the time and i said listen we can acquire customers for your business that was a renewable energy company we got a little he, he responded to my email and just two words ring lisa and her number and mm. we rang lisa and last i think it was in july this this was this was 2009. We thought we got a piece of business on that would we get about 30 grand of profit out of it, and it would do us for the summer of 09. Right. We're still with that client, and our last deal was an EU tender worth 15 million over the next three to five years. So wow. the uh, and that was a that was a an email we can get customers for your business. So there was a couple yeah. of little I've, I've had. I was, I'm reading Bono's or listening to Bono's autobiography at the moment. Bono from U2. Yeah. He he self narrates his own audiobook of his memoirs. So, That's awesome. And he he has the origin story of you too. Is okay. Larry Mullen stuck a a notice up on the notice board in their school? Drummer seeks uh, musicians to form band. Right. And that and that was the that was the little card that Bono yeah. responded to, and and Adam and the Edge and 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 you two was born. So I, exactly. I, I, I'm listening. To, I was listening to to Bono for the last few few days as I'm walking the dog, and I I think about that little U2 starting from that, but we're not U2, but we've had monumental results in business coming from yeah. a broadcast fax number one, and then a, a, an email yeah. uh, in in, the, in March of 2009. We rolled out a team selling renewable energy in July 09, and we've been we've been at it ever since. Hard at it ever since, yeah. yeah. The, the the reality of your humility is really what I want to point out real quick here, that you would call it a stroke of luck, right? That that you got one response out of 1500. How many people listening would have sent the 1500 mailers, facts, like fill in the blank with whatever it is, gotten the one response and been upset that they didn't get a a 1% ratio response, right? And I just love the perspective that you have of gratefulness of like, wow, the fact that I had that one client come from that, like, wow, what a good move. The fact that you sent a random email, I'm sure that there was quite a few other random emails that you sent as well that go into the backdrop. That's your one email that the overnight success into now a $15 million contract. Like, But there was so much before that. And we all know that as entrepreneurs, but the fact that we got to hear you say it is like, ah, yep. I know this guy has been on the trail because that's usually what happens is that you're on the trail for a while 
and you've been doing the thing and the thing that you've been doing just hasn't been hitting. And then all of a sudden it hits. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's luck, but you were doing the work. So there's a, there's a preparation meets opportunity there for sure. We were drilling for oil and we got a, we got, we got to dig a fair few holes, but we, we only really focused on the one that the oil actually came out of. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and look, when I think about a lot of the businesses that I've started, or when I think about a lot of my clients, that's typically how it works is that you just kind of got to f- find that initial place. And then you just go, look right here yeah. until nothing else matters until we, we get all the oil out of this, this hole here, which is fine because then it allows yeah. you to focus in on that client, provide amazing service. And that's just typically how things work. And eventually you got to, you got to expand out past that one client, but that's okay. There's a period of time there that makes a lot of sense. I want to know from like a history perspective, did you just like, did you, did you have a level head through all of that? Because you kind of like you, it sounds like you went through quite a bit of time there in that story. And then even like the collapse of 2009, you kind of just like toss that in there of like, Hey, we were a little bit on the edge of our seats. Like there was obviously a little bit of a roller coaster happening outside of the success, like behind the scenes, were you a little nervous? What was the feeling as you were drilling per se? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say nervous. It was, it was exciting and it was, yeah. we've had our backs to the wall a few times and I've been on, on, on our ass a couple of times, felt the pressure. We welcome, we welcome adversity. I'm, I'm kind of tuned into the, the cycle, the economic cycles. So a boom bust, Ireland is a, is a boom bust kind of a place. And I am, I'm, well, I, I, I grew up in a kind of a boom bust house. My dad would come home and either he'd be emptying money onto the table or the, it would be the completely the <laughs> other, other, other end of the, the spectrum. So the, yeah. you welcome adversity. Everybody else is in the same boat. So when the property market collapsed here or the financial, there was, there was people out of work, you know, everywhere, but you know, whatever at the time you're just, you, you might go from thinking long-term to thinking month to month or day to day or sure. whatever it might be. But I, I, I don't drink. I kept a, a fairly level head. I've, I've, I have the tools of good philosophy to good stoic philosophy to, yeah. to, 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 to talk me through and give me perspective on disaster when it comes, yeah. because it's, it's just so good. disaster in the game. It's not disaster in life so you can yeah. lots of things lots of pressures can be coming at you but you can still have a calm mind a fit body and a house full of love to go home to and yeah. when you when you close that door your kids are not privy to the ins and outs of what's going on in the in the, in the world if things are going and, and at the moment the thing things are tough at the moment we are at that sharp end of the cycle yeah. at the moment there's an energy crisis we're selling renewable energy we're trying to incentivize people to switch over to a greener a greener form of energy right but at the moment, it's price. Price. We don't care if the energy is not renewable. If they've got a cheaper price, we want it. So right. you've got there's been a meltdown of stocks. The stocks are whatever forty percent off their highs of twenty twenty one. Yeah, right. the, the the like the war in Ukraine is on our doorstep. Like Ireland has just taken in two hundred thousand refugees, I think. Wow. Uh, and and there is and there there already is a housing crisis here. There's no incentive for developers to build houses over here there's no incentive for the the incentive is to build houses for funds that can buy the whole street off you or buy the whole block but there's no incentive to sell them to individuals because you know it would just take the developer too long individual snag lists and this and that they just want to shift them onto a fund so you've got this sort of all these this perfect storm of stuff going on in the macros at the moment but we're still, yeah. we're still make everyone in the business aware that these are the, these are the tough times. These are the, these are the, these are the times that will galvanize us. These, this is the, yeah. this is the, the adversarial situation that, you know, we were preparing for. Right. <laughs> if you're, yeah, you yeah, know, it's game time. So, yeah. So it's game time now. It's serious. The, the free money is, is, is loose, low interest rates. Free money, looseness of governments with handouts. Now they want it all back. They want it all <laughs> back. And so we've got to more than, you know, thinking about how we got through 08. It's how are we going to get through 22, 23, 24? These are the, these, this is, you got to this is the look reality. forward and realize we've got a fleet of maybe 40 cars on the road. Diesel prices are through the roof over in Europe. Right. So you know, LA, we've got five offices. Energy prices are through the roof. And it's, right. We're going into a cold winter. Electricity bills and, and, and heating bills have doubled. So we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of little problems there that need to be, uh, we need to survive yeah. uh, into 2023. But we've had, I was in IT recruitment when the dot com bubble burst. I was in recruitment when the the, the, the financial crisis happened. So you you get battle hardened, but you yep. understand where you are in the cycle, and yep. you can say to yourself, "Well, listen, I need to be taken into consideration that in a lot of 
maybe industries or investment opportunities, although people right. are running for the hills. Now is the time to buy. Right. Now is the time to buy the NASDAQ. Now is the yeah. time to, to, to look make at those strategic and, moves for the next, for moves. the next cycle to start a hundred percent. Let's talk about nobody... practical in your business. I want to know, especially in those first couple of years, maybe before you hit that first million, I want to know of a good decision that you made that, that, I mean, obviously you're a sales guy, so maybe you're going to go down that direction, but what what does what does a guy here listening today or a gal listening today learn from you about a good decision that you made? Ah, uh, listen, the best decision I ever made was quitting alcohol at twenty five. Interesting. You know, that was okay. the best decision. That was the, listen, and every other decision flows from that decision. Yeah. So it was a. I was between the I, in Ireland. Drink is part of the culture. Right. So I think I was handed a. I think I was handed a, a first drink from my friends when I was about 10. I think wow. my dad bought me my first pint when I was like 12. Sure. And then, so and then the teenage years, yeah. the, I was playing rugby. And that's a huge drink culture associated with that. And by, by the age of 25, I was just done and dusted. I was, oh. I was a active, you know, alcoholic and that was it. And I was losing friendships and I couldn't hold down a job and wow. I couldn't really be relied upon in relationships or in friendships. And uh, I had to uh, go into recovery and rebuild. And yeah. but that's, that's really my, uh, my first few jobs. Like I was where I found, I found comfort in some white knuckle boiler room type call centers <laughs> right. uh, where I just go in and I'd, I'd hit the phones and I'd learn to sell. And I was selling IT right. training courses and then a little bit of evolution happened. And I would think I was only seven months sober when I met my now wife. That was like 20 in the year, I, 1999. I had, a, I had my last drink. Wow. I think I met my now wife seven months after that. So I was, I was, I was, I had a new set of tools, right. a new attitude. I was chastened by life. Yeah. And you were I prepared was, for that moment to meet her. I was prepared and she never saw me drunk. I never wet the bed with her in it. I never Big deal. Lie, had to lie or do anything. I was able to be myself and be my best self with her from day one. So that was, yeah. and I don't think I would have had the tools if I had kept drinking for another year. I don't think I would have had the tools to, to, um, close to the deal, <laughs> close the deal. Yeah. Close the deal, make it work. That's right. and, and then with her support in terms of her emotional support and her belief in me, like it's we had beautiful. just bought it bought our first place in two, in 2002. And I was, I was, I was chomping at the bit in, in Ireland, you don't get a mortgage. If you if you're a young entrepreneur, you don't, they don't give you the bank, won't give you a loan. So you got to right. stay in the job, get to a certain earning level, get the house bought. And then, and then you can, you can pursue right. your entrepreneurial dreams. So right. you know, 2004, when I was ready to go, I took the leap with a, with, I think I had, uh, I think I had about 5k in cash and about 20k on credit cards that I need if I needed to dip into right. and I sort of had I probably could have I probably I probably could have lasted six months without without yeah. um, sending out an invoice but luckily I sent out that broadcast fax and some invoices went and, out after <laughs> and you were able to <laughs> land your first deal I, I love what you've said so far because it's really mindset it's clarity of mind it's it's the tools that you needed in order to make good decisions so the yeah. good decision led to a whole plethora of good decisions, which included your wife, which was just fuel for the journey. Like just so many good things, like the domino effect of that one decision, yeah. as you said. Yeah. So I want to pick your brain on one quick thing. The, the guy listening right now, the gal listening right now, who isn't where you are, where, where, whether it be alcohol or any other negative obsession, right? Whatever that other obsession is, because entrepreneurs, let's just be honest. That's what we do. We obsess over things. We get a little crazy. We go hard. We go all in. We're either all in or all out. This is just typically how we operate. So what did you do or what can you share with the listener today of like maybe how you got sober? How would you suggest that they leave that negative obsession and apply it towards the business or their family or a better obsession? Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It ultimately back in 1999, one of my friends had to collect me on the other side of the city and bring me back. And his Des McCann, I've, I've, I saved my life. The he had a he had a friend Henry who had been sober 17 years, and he got me talking to him. But you know, ultimately, once you have a stop doing what you're doing, and you can take it minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, you would be amazed at how quick the body starts to regenerate where the color comes back into your cheeks the, your teeth your eyes your body it regenerates really quickly yeah. i was i was yeah, i would say 
I, I, was, I find it difficult to read books, actual sure. books. I, I'm, a, I'm an audio book man. I can read yeah. on a plane when I'm strapped to the seat. I'm kind <laughs> of a little bit, I'm kind of a dog's kids. Even on the beach, there's, I can't really concentrate. So I, I got to be... I got to be moving to learn. So I listened to a lot of sure. audio books. Back in 19, back, I think it was around 2002, I, I got a job working sales and I was out on the road traveling around making presentations to HR directors, and yeah. psychometric tools at the time. But I remember um, the guy I worked for, John Lyon, he recognized that I was a little bit rough around the edges. And yeah. you start your, you can, st- I started my journey of self-development with tapes in the car on those long journeys. It yeah. might be Stephen Covey and the seven habits of highly effective people. Yeah. And I would, I would, I didn't have too many tapes. I would listen to it over and over again. There yep. was Brian Tracy. You know, yep. there, there's a sales, he does, he has a, he has old tapes they're tapes and it's it's just sales stuff setting goals those those kind of like self-help i, w- I would be an advocate of self-help and the, sure. the learning about habits that other people have used to be effective in life yeah so, propel themselves forward propel and out of the bad forward. obsession right out of the bad habits. and out of the bad obsession yeah but ultimately sport i, I sport and particularly rugby has been a a hugely positive guiding force in my life. And especially I sort of drifted away from it. I was very serious when I was young and drifted away. And then when I, and then when kind of gave up, gave up alcohol, immersed myself in playing rugby again, at a low level, you might captain a team so that you're, you're busy and you have a bit of admin associated with it. Right. Right. So that was, that was kept. Yeah, you're, so it's it's a it's a positive thing. Supportive friends. My friends would still party, but they there wouldn't be a. You want a drink? Are you sure? I ah, have one. It's just right. get them a water, and and that's it. There was yep. there was no. Now there was some friends to what you realized that they were. Yep, got to move on. They were just we're 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 drinking buddies. We're not real friends. We're debating negativity in our lives here together. So, so you got to jettison some. But by and large, I would say to anyone, especially guys that are guys who oh, their mind is going at a hundred miles an hour they can't sit down and read a book i would i would i would advise get an audible account yep. get your earphones into your ear and just start somewhere there start yeah. somewhere there find something that you're interested in and and, and start there and then you can yeah. you can evolve that there's the, the, the there's so many amazing books on audible there you could just you could lose yourself in any any genre you want yep. and philosophy is 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 really good and and there's a, an author there, Ryan Holiday, makes Stoic philosophy very accessible. He's got a couple of really good audio books. He narrates himself. The obstacle is the way, and the ego is the enemy, and these these kinds of things. So they they will, yeah. they will, they will give you a, a different mindset. They'll give you All a different right. mindset, and then you'll All finally right. re- realize you might be, you might understand that you know what your addiction is. You know what what your your dopamine system has been tricked. You yep. learn about dopamine. You learn about, you can feel it when you know about it. You can totally. feel the stock market goes up or the sales are up or the lads have had a great day in the field or whatever success you feel. You can, yeah. you can, oh, there's dopamine now. Yep. You can actually, so. I, I can you know, feel it seeping in. <laughs> you can feel it seeping through your veins. Yeah. So it's, but self-awareness and it's awareness yeah. of what, what is, what is driving your bad habits and yeah. what, what, what can you do to address those? And that, that was, that was, that was, I'd, I'd, I'd find audio books. I'm on the run. I can run in the morning every day. I've got. I've had Bono in my ear for the last week or so and books like that. Like he's a philosopher too. And yep. the new way they, they produce audio books at, at the, the start of the chapter, you would, you would hear the start of the song and then he's right. telling you about where he was during the song and it might drift back into the song then as after he's and you have a whole new perspective on that music that, you know, has always sure. been there. Yep. But, yeah. And the uh, same thing for all the self-help audios, as you've said, I, I'm a huge audible fan as well. In fact, I was just talking with my wife just the other day. She noticed that, that there was three credits left and she was like, should I like, it says it's coming to an end. Like, do I need to, do I need to shut this down? I'm like, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. Like, it doesn't matter if they roll over, if I lose them, whatever, that sucker is going to renew. And those credits are going to be available, whether, whether I know it or not, because now that they're available, then I, then I will go buy them. Yeah. It's on automatic. Yeah. It, it forces yeah. me. Yeah. Pay. Yeah. And it's, it's and, and now my, my kids are in the audible in my account. They're buying books. I've had to, you, you have to, sometimes you got to renew early because I've used all your credits. <laughs> That's right. Know, That's but, right. Uh, it's, uh, but it's great. It's, it's great. I, I, I would audible is one of the, in terms of, you know, learning about, yeah. it could be anything you could start off with little book of investing if that was your thing and learn yep. about index funds and you can move on to venture capitalism 100%. and you can go down that rabbit hole and that's right it is, that's right. It is there's 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 so much to learn that's right well i want to flip the script to a bad decision you've given us quite a bit on on how to, that that bad choice that you were making which is incredible what was what was a, a bad choice that you made maybe in the business that uh, that we can learn from 
Yeah, listen, every I've learned every lesson a man can learn the hard way. Mm. You know? But yeah. I you know, and I, I've been trying to think about this decision. Like there's there's obviously I'm I'm human and if 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 guys that are in my business are looking at this, they could probably they're probably shouting at the screen going, that bad decision, that bad decision, that bad <laughs> decision. Right. But the uh, when you're when you're when you're when you're when you're happy today, it's very hard to equate a bad decision to, it's very hard to think of a decision as being a bad thing because everything, right. every decision I've made has brought me here to exactly. where I am today. And I'm pretty, I'm, I'm not satisfied, but I'm, I'm, I've got a calm mind. I've got a fit body and I'm, I'm in a house full of love. So there is yeah, that perspective. So the, the, the things they, they say the, the, the life there's, there's, there's people that will pull you up and people that will push you down. But right. in the end, you'll, you'll thank them both. And it's the same with good decisions and bad decisions. Like you, you, you make yeah. a bad decision. You, you, you got to go take your, take your medicine. But at the other side of that, yep. you have, you're, 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 a, you're a better person. You're, you're, you've renewed yeah. and you, you've, you've had some adversity. You've had some struggle. So ultimately, you know, the bad decisions that send us into the forest or that send us into the jungle, you know, ultimately they can end up being the making of us. They, they can end up being the, that, that visit into the woods can be the, the, uh, can, can be the experience that, that sets yeah. you up for future success. Well, I mean, so, even in the detail that you gave to us around your drinking habits before getting sober, I mean, obviously that led to that moment that led to those decisions that led to who you are today, a, a clean, yeah. sober, fit body, fit mind person. And so, yeah, I think that you're, that you're right. We all agree with those things. It's, it, we, we know that along the way <clears throat> that we're looking to not make bad decisions. Obviously the, the, the yeah. history that I, I want to win more than I lose. But you're right. The perspective on the losing really gives us gives us another level to be able to think about. So yeah, just make a decision. Make a decision. Stand over it. I'm sure. I am certain that there have been times in my life where I zigged and I should have zagged. And if I had a zag, that'd be five x more right. successful than I am now. But you know, it is. It's where are those decisions? Right. Where, are the, where are those decisions? Who made the um, decision? Is what your point we is? Made a right? decision. We made our decision. Like you can sit there and not make a decision. You know, people can 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 remain in a loop, focusing right. in on some kind of thing and not progress in their lives. Right. Just make a decision and stand by that decision. And ultimately, you can evolve that decision. If it is the wrong, like the worst decisions I ever made were probably relationship oriented in sure. terms of friends i wish i hadn't lost or in terms of work we we, we turn up as professionals and we we try to deliver and we we, we do the best we can right. ultimately the everything that happens in our business you think has already happened but we still get surprised yeah 100 um, percent. It's, it's like snakes and ladders sometimes you stand on a snake you got to go back sometimes you're on a ladder up you go but ultimately right. it's just got to keep going well, John, I'm going to end the show here by asking you two last questions. I want to, yep. you said you're not a big reader and Audible's the, the thing for you for, for that self-development, for the, for the growing of the business specifically, what have you listened to or what have you read on one of those plane rides that you can recommend to, uh, to the listeners? The, uh, yeah, there's been, uh, there's been quite a few. I think the Marshall Goldsmith has written a book recently, the earned life. And okay. that is, uh, he's a, he's a, uh, a coach to CEOs. Yep. So there's a, there's a lot of good stuff in that. And he, he, he himself narrates the, the audio book. So yeah. you're getting it straight from the horse's mouth. I love that. Yeah. The, I would recommend Bono's memoir just for a, just to, I suppose it's a, from nothing to everything. Right. Right. And, exactly. And that, and That's encouraging. He was, that is encouraging, but that, that is very encouraging. So there is, there's, there's so many, the, because the, that the power law, that's a, a book about venture capitalism. Um, sure. And it's just talks about the, the, the story of, you know, Silicon Valley and yeah. the, the, the evolution of the deals that happened there, you know? Right. Yeah. I just hear you that know? you're expounding your brain in, in a lot of different directions. Obviously you're, you're a lifelong learner. I hear that being more of the recommendation than anything. The, the ones that you've mentioned though, we'll put in the show notes that way, the listeners, if they want to download those or even purchase the actual books, they can definitely do that. Last question here for you, John. If you could whisper in the younger John's ear, 
what would you say? Just say, keep going. I, I, I wouldn't want to miss out on any of the mistakes that I made. I wouldn't want to, because I wouldn't want to miss out on any of the, the, the adversity. I wouldn't want to have, there's been, there's been a lot of water under the bridge, but ultimately I think everything that you go through in your life, you, you have to go through it. Ultimately, right. Every challenge, every test. I think if I had made it a little bit easier for myself by giving myself a tip, I might say uh, buy Apple. <laughs> 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 yep. But, uh, or Google or yeah, Bitcoin yeah. or <laughs> yeah, any of those things. Like I might give myself a, the name right. of a horse that won a race or something along those lines. But yeah. apart from that, keep going. And that, that, that might've been enough for me if my future self had said that to me, yeah. that, that yeah, would have given me reassurance that I was on the right track. And uh, right. that is, that is, uh, it's tough to see that in the there. moment. And I think that's exactly where the listener is. So I hope that they take your little tip to yourself for themselves, because that's exactly where they're at. They're, they're in that place where they just need to hear, just keep going. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's going to all going to work out. And in fact, this guy right here you're listening to is saying that he wouldn't have traded out the, the bad things, the bad decisions, the ups and the downs. He would have done it all over again. So John, how can the listener find you? They want to reach out. Maybe, maybe they're in Ireland and they need to hire a sales team, or maybe they just want to reach out to you as an entrepreneur, pick your brain. How can they find you? Yeah, they can email me, john at billsave.ie, B-I-L-L-S-A-V-E.ie. I'm on LinkedIn, John Sharp. Uh, Perfect. Bill Save, and you can reach out through the Bill Save website. There so, you if you want a sales team, remote, tele sales, field sales, event sales, anywhere, we have a teams and set up. We've got teams, remote tele sales teams. We've had teams operate from Bosnia, Romania, India, South Africa. Right. We've had field sales teams here, and we have the agency in a box so we can literally roll into any town and quickly deploy the systems, recruit, train, manage, pay. And I get a team up and running for any organization, especially mass market service providers like energy companies or internet yeah. companies. Love that. Love that. Well, we'll put all that in the show notes as well. John, thank you for being here. I love the stories. You're, you're, uh, you're someone that uh, could be, we could sit here and listen to you for hours, which is great. We love the accent as well. Of course, I'm sure you hear that a bunch from us Americans, but the reality is, is that man, you've got a story and I just so appreciate you sharing to you, your family and your business, your teams, all that good stuff. Thank you for being here, John. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries and now interviewing literally over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings literally exists to Bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.